In February of 2021, I published a video on YouTube about my incredibly long journey to complete the full run of 1987 action figures from the Action Force International Heroes range. And I stated at the end of that video that it was highly unlikely that I would go out and collect everything else from 1987, even though that was my favorite year, because I imagined that the Mauler would be out of my price range. But thanks to a group of incredibly generous friends and patrons of the channel. I now have the Mauler in my collection, but I don't want to review this toy yet because the driver, Heavy Metal, is missing his microphone and his weapon. And I really want those before I review this toy. But another key vehicle in the 1987 lineup was my big Christmas gift that year when I was a kid, and that is the Cobra Hydrofoil. And this high-speed attack boat found its way sailing into my collection thanks to an incredible generous donation from my friend Jody, host of the excellent YouTube channel Gen X Toys Geek. And I've put this review off for far too long. So Jody, thank you very much. And let's get into it. Let's discuss today the Cobra Moray Hydrofoil. Stay tuned. Come with me, toy fans. Hey toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel where we're obsessed with bringing you the true history of vintage toys and action figures. The Hydrofoil is based on Cobra Command's top secret designs and it's one of the most advanced weapons in Cobra's arsenal. At the time of its release into the Hasbro G.I. Joe toy line, the Cobra Hydrofoil was one of the largest vehicles, one of the largest toys offered to Cobra. I mean, it even dwarfs the Cobra Rattler. But finding a nice, unbroken, complete example today can be very challenging. This toy has lots of little parts that are easy to fall off. And the Cobra Hydrofoil has been missing from my collection for a very long time. Ever since I traded this toy with a childhood friend of mine in exchange for the G.I. Joe Tomahawk. So it is a real thrill to have the Cobra Hydrofoil back in my collection today. This vessel is powered by a high flow 775 horsepower Destro designed V12 gasoline engine. You know, you see these massive exhaust ports out the back and the sleek lines of this ship. And you know that if this vehicle was a reality, this would be one high speed machine. And the designers at Hasbro really packed in a ton of play value into this vehicle. Let's go through all of the little features piece by piece. Starting at the rear of the vessel, we have two kind of depth charge compartments that you lift up to deploy depth charges. Right behind the depth charge launchers, we have the Destro Design engine that I just talked about. It's got a removable cover and some really nice detail on the engines. And you'll see that either side of this is firing positions for a number of Cobra troops, with two pivoting machine guns on either side, making a total of four. And these machine gun accessories are very, very fragile. Trying to get a complete one of these toys without machine guns with bent barrels or broken mounting pegs is very challenging. And a real interesting detail is that there's a small black platform on either side of the engine with foot pegs where you can mount your Cobra troops, but these are actually designed to be lifted out of the deck of the Moray Hydrofoil so that the Cobras can store spare weapons underneath. The main cockpit of the Hydrofoil houses both the pilot and a navigator. The pilot here is Lamprey. He's an exclusive figure that was only ever available with this particular toy. We're gonna to talk about him a little bit later in the review. And situated directly above and in between the pilot and the navigator, a 360 degree traversing turret with a double barreled machine gun. On either side of the turret, we have two removable air to ground low flight missiles. And situated below those on either side of the hydrofoil is a pair of very large torpedoes. Either side of the cockpit, we have a pair of Shore Assault 55 millimeter cannons. And dead center in front of the cockpit is a pilot operated 19 millimeter machine gun. And as you can see on the surface, this is a hell of a lot of weaponry for one particular vehicle. Cobra was not messing around here. This is an attack vehicle. And you would think that all this heavy weaponry would be enough. But no, Cobra's got a surprise up their sleeve. 
By depressing this button here just to the side of the pilot's cannon, you'll see that it elevates a hatch on the front deck of the hydrofoil to reveal four jump start air to water missiles. And this little play feature gave me so much fun when I was a kid, just all day long. Both the pilot's and the navigator's position are somewhat protected by a short windshield. And in front of the navigator's position is a spotlight. And when this toy was released, this spotlight came with a very small clear plastic lens, which is missing from this example. And as a matter of fact, it's missing from a lot of examples. But there are a lot of reproduction offerings on the market. And I'm hoping to pick up a lens cover for this spotlight when I go to Joe Fest at the end of June. Situated in front of the Hydrofoils command cabin is two hatches that can be opened up and you can stick some additional Cobra troops down in here and give them a level of protection that's, that's not really afforded to any of the other crew of the Hydrofoil. Now the final play feature to discuss with this toy is the deployment of the Hydrofoils themselves, which are these two skids underneath the vessel. And Hydrofoil is its real world technology. When you get a high speed boat, once it achieves a certain speed and then it deploys hydrofoils, they will actually lift the hull of the boat up out of the water and enable the vessel to reach even greater speeds. And the toy engineering here is quite brilliant. There's this lever you'll see at the back, which when fully pulled back has the hydrofoils retracted into the hull of the hydrofoil itself. But if you simply pick up the vessel, push the lever forward, it deploys the hydrofoils, but also it makes for a fantastic display stand. You know, this is the way I like to display the toy in my cabinet and not with the hydrofoils retracted and just the bottom of the hull of this vehicle sitting on the shelf. Now, as I mentioned, the Cobra More hydrofoil is piloted by Lamprey, a figure that was included with this vehicle and was not available on a single figure card back. And I really like the understated design of this particular figure. A very simple but striking color palette. This action figure also has what I think is a, a quite awesome accessory. He's got a Sten gun with an over the shoulder strap. And although when you strap it over his shoulder, the Sten gun ends up hanging upside down, it never really bothered me as a child because he rarely got out from behind the steering wheel of the hydrofoil. Now, according to the box, this vehicle carries up to 11 Cobra troops. When Jody donated this toy to the channel, not only did he reunite me with a long lost special Christmas gift from 1987, he actually found this toy in the English Action Force packaging. The toy is exactly the same as the Cobra Hydrofall that was released in the American market under the GI Joe banner. But having it with this Action Force box, you know, this was the big box that I unwrapped on Christmas morning, 1987. And I will admit the box was a little bit beat up when, when it arrived. Um, not that Jody had beaten it up. That was a little bit of restoration work here to iron out some of the creases. And I'm so pleased with the way this restoration turned out. This box had been in storage until I restored it a couple of days ago. It's not going back into storage. This is gonna go above one of the display cabinets in the collection room because I love the artwork, it's Action Force, and it's a toy from my childhood. Now, for those of you who did not grow up collecting these toys in the 80s in the United Kingdom, it's important to understand that when Hasbro released the Action Force International Heroes line, Palatoy's Action Force had been gone from store shelves for over 12 months. Palatoy's Action Force ended in 1985. In 1986, we didn't have any Action Force product on store shelves, so I was collecting Rambo, I think, instead. And then in 1987, when this was introduced, certainly for me anyway, I didn't realize there was any connection between this toy line and the Palatoy one. I thought this was a brand new toy line and I was starting from scratch. So the fact that the artwork on this particular box features the dreadnought named Torch was always really frustrating to me as a child because this character appeared in the comics. I always wanted him, but in 1987, we only got Buzzor and Ripper. And I always kind of saw Buzzor, Ripper, and Torch as the three OG core Dreadnoughts. And the fact that I couldn't get this figure when I was a kid was very, very frustrating to me. 
Little did I know that this figure was actually released in 1985 under the Palatoy banner. But as I said, when I was 10 years old, I never made the connection between these two toy lines. Even though they had the same name, the packaging art was so different, I thought I was looking at an entirely new beast. And with 1987 being the inaugural year of Action Force International Heroes being released in the United Kingdom, it actually meant that Action Force didn't have any water-based vehicles that could fight the hydrofoil. Yes, the whale had been released previously, but again, it's another one of those issues where I didn't know the Palatoy Action Force line was connected to this one. In 1988, I did acquire the Devilfish and the Mail Away Manta Windsurfer, but you can put both of these together and there's still no match for the Cobra Hydrofoil. What was available though in the UK in 1987 was the transportable tactical battle platform. And I mentioned in my Action Force International Heroes completing the collection video that I was somewhat frustrated as a 10 year old child because I really wanted the transportable tactical battle platform when I was a kid, but my cousin Shane got it and I got the hydrofoil. But looking back now as an adult, what I do really appreciate is the real juxtaposition between these two toys. The tactical battle platform is a defensive position, whereas the Cobra More hydrofoil is an attack vehicle. And this really sums up the dynamic for me between Cobra and Action Force. Action Force are the steadfast defenders and Cobra were the aggressors. So because I didn't have the tactical battle platform in childhood and I wouldn't get any waterborne Action Force vehicles until 1988, I had a fun little scenario that I would play out on the living room floor with the hydrofoil. And I would imagine that Lamprey had brought the hydrofoil into dry dock to rearm all the spent munitions, maybe pick up a few extra Cobra eels and other Cobra troops before heading out on another mission. And while they're in the dry dock, Snake Eyes would sneak into the facility. And when no one was watching, he would lift up the front missile panel and stow away underneath. And then when the Hydrofoil deployed, Snake Eyes would wait until they were far out at sea before launching a secret ninja attack. As with the majority of G.I. Joe toy vehicles available in the 1980s, the Cobra Hydrofoil made several appearances in the Sunbow animated cartoon. And the vehicle also played a key role in issue 40 of the G.I. Joe Marvel comic, even featuring in the animated TV promo for this particular issue. Lift up! Go, Joe! Wait till Cobra sees our new battle platform. It's arriving! Attack now by Hydrofoil! Cobra Hydrofoil, super the water in the evil new boat. Cobra Hydrofoil is gonna get G.I. Find out in Marvel Comics. Although my favourite appearance of the Hydrofoil in comic form is when it appeared on the front cover of Action Force Weekly, issue number 47. Overall, this toy has a very striking design and looks terrific on a display shelf, provided you can get yourself a relatively good condition one with the majority of the accessories. But it's the engineering of this toy that impresses me the most. With the deployment of the hydrofoils beneath the vessel and the push button deployment of the missiles on the front deck, these plate features gave me tons of fun when I was a child and I still appreciate them today. So thank you all for watching and a special thank you to Jody from Gen X Toys Geek for donating this toy to the channel. And you can subscribe to the Gen X Toys Geek YouTube channel by clicking down here. I'm Tony from Analog Toys and Yo Cobra.